And that was it. Was it all pretty much the same? I mean, did you know any of these guys beforehand, um, or was it the same thing? Were you just reaching out to people and hoping they come back with a yes? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the only the only person that I knew was Joel Cadbury. Uh, he was the singer in South, right? And he also did a lot of vocals for Uncle. He was kind oh, of part of that, uh, the whole Uncle unit for you know um, about ten years or something, right? Okay. So, so yeah, he was the only guy that I knew. The rest of them, um, my manager reached out to, uh, apart from a friend that got in touch with Jim Jones for me, and then Fraser actually, who ended up um, he recorded some drums uh, for a few of the tracks somewhere, and the other one was Ron Sexsmith. We just started, fo- I think Ron just started following me on Twitter randomly, and I was like, what? And I was like, fuck, man. I was like, <laughs> I was like well, I'm not going to let this opportunity go. So I was, like, I, I just kind of plucked up the courage to drop him a message and I had a track already that I knew would be perfect for him which was the, the track that is on the record and sent him that and when he sent me that back again I was like that was another one of those moments where I was like fuck man you know it's like Ron Sexsmith you know he's just got such a beautiful voice and way yeah. with his words that just relate to everybody and then, honestly that song that's how you're holding up I, yeah. That's that could have been the theme song for 2020. Days are dark as dark is bright. Heaven's heavy, hell is. <laughs> it's just the the lyrics on it. I mean, God, talk about being prophetic. Jeez. I oh, know, man. Oh God, I wish I could, I wish I could write things. You know, words as beautiful as Ron, but you know, it's it's my kind of. Uh, yeah, I should probably say actually, and with with writing music, I'm super. You know, I've, I've found a medium where I'm totally able to express myself exactly how I want to, but with. With, I don't know, communication and words. And I don't know, man, it's just not something that is my strong point. So, I'm a, it, t- yeah. yeah, so you might need to edit the silences <laughs> to make me feel a bit <laughs> snappier and sharper <laughs> if you can. Man, it's, you know, it's crazy. Speaking of editing, because well, I'll probably edit this out. I, I, yeah. I did a little bit of calculation and I think for every hour I record, it takes like four hours to edit. Oh, fuck, man, really? Yeah. Crazy, wow. yeah. So m- thank God bless my wife and my kids. They're incredibly understanding. So to let uh, it's, your, it's your passion, right? It, well, it, this and photography. I, I, yeah. and, and honestly, music. I love music. I wish I could play. I've taught myself how to play guitar. So I get. I, I get to play a lot of noise. And maybe that's one reason why I like the sound of, of Exit Calm and, and especially early Verve. And it's just big swells of noise. And I love that. And I can kind of do that on my guitar a little bit accidentally. So, We're kids. But it's, it's, to me, your music and, and, and Nick's it just kind of f- swallows you. It just kind of envelops you completely. And I, I think, God, okay, now this is, this is going to be really weird. But hang with me for a second. <laughs> I think what, and I honest to God, I just thought of this now. I think I may have figured out why I love it so much. When I first really got into music and, and hearing bands like the Verve and, and these big shoegaze bands with all the noise and the effects and all, my parents had just gotten divorced and my mom literally just vanished for like a decade and then my dad was kind of doing his own thing. Uh, you know, I was, I mean, my mom, she, I mean, we didn't, she, they vanished. I mean, she, she was just out of my life for like, you know, eight, 10 years, something like that. And right. uh, my dad was trying to rebuild his life because it kind of took him by surprise. So he was just working on rebuilding. He had his own company and, and he was, he just kind of, you know, put himself into the into the company to try to keep his mind active and, and, and away from what was going on. And I think for me, hearing that huge sound kind of swallow me made me feel better, made me feel, um, it was almost like a, a, a musical hug. 
Yeah, man. That, that, that's weird about total it. escapism, isn't it? As well, yeah. like you, 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 with that kind of sound. In fact, I, I remember totally. Yeah, I bought my brother um, the Verve EP yes. for his birthday when we were when we were younger, and I, I think he was after a Northern Soul, and I didn't really know what I was buying. I ended up getting this EP by accident, and he never really listened to it, and, and I. I remember putting it on in headphones and just being like, fucking hell. Yeah. Just total, a totally different world, isn't it? You know, and I've, I've definitely had a, a big impact on my, on the sound and stuff, 100%, oh. you know. It's yeah. just, uh, She's a Superstar is, is one of my favorite tracks. That the It's just incredible. And the way it just builds up and, and kind of completely surrounds you is, and that's what I loved about your guitar is just, it did the same thing. Yeah, that's that's cool. Well, thank you, man. I'm, I, it's weirdly that um, through the exit calm days, I think when we uh, when we put out that seven inch, actually the higher learning, um, Nick McCabe got in. Uh, I don't know how this happened. Some well, but it's something to do with like at this point. Obviously, I didn't have a computer. Right. And I didn't really know what the internet was. <laughs> <laughs> it was still quite a new thing. And I used to get people coming up to me saying, oh, uh, people talk about you on the internet. And I was like, what? What, what's that? Like, what the fuck is, yeah. What the, uh, <laughs> and there was this forum that was set up for the, for the uh, like, uh, from, by fans for the birth. And so there was people that are obviously connecting the two sounds together and, what, and whatnot. And then, so it was something, it was through that. And one day I got out of the blue, I just got a phone call from Nick McCabe. Wow. And he was like, oh, I heard uh, how you learn it. All the way through the phone call, I was like, is this somebody taking the piss? Do you know what right. I mean? It's kind of yeah. going with the phone call again, but I'm like <laughs> thinking in the back of my head, nah. Like, you know, and then, and he was like, oh, I really like uh, how you learning. And so it was like, you know, I just wanted to say, you know, hello and, you know, wow. well, you know, well done with everything. And, and, and then about two weeks later, he phoned me again. He was like, what are you up to? And I was like, oh, I'm playing a gig tonight. We were playing somewhere in Nottingham, I think. And he was like, yeah, I know, I know you are. I'm coming, I'm coming to see you. Oh. And I was like, I was like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, oh, where are you? And I said, oh, I'm at the, meet, I'm at the venue. Step outside. And, and then that was the, I think that was the first time that I'd met somebody that I really respected musically. Wow. And that was, the, and it was quite an odd an odd thing, really. You know, remember yeah. when we first met that he was kind of like, like it was just, I don't know, man. It's just, I think it's the first time that that transition kind of went from not, uh, I don't, listening to somebody to that crossover of becoming friends with him. I've become friends with him. Like, oh, I don't, don't keep in touch with him a lot these days. But yeah, but yeah he, he, he's, a great, he's a great guy. Like, he's on know, my list for, the, for my, like my unicorns of, for this show. Oh, you should get him on, man. I, 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 I'll try and hook you up with him if you're, you know, oh, he's a... You're my yeah, guardian he's... angel. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. I, I'll but, ask him for you. Yeah. I, I, I kind of know what you mean. It's it's kind of funny. And I'll, this whole show is supposed to be about you, and I keep throwing out stories about me, but... No, man. It's, it's, the, that's how I prefer it. Anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> what happened? Okay, so I, I told you that I'm a, I'm a photographer. I mean, I'm not a professional one anymore, but I... I did it professionally for about a decade. I went to college for it. And uh, right before the pandemic started, I, I started getting back into doing it, you know, shooting live music events again. And because that's, since I don't have to do it professionally, I'm just going to really focus on what the things I love to do. And I love music. I love photography and I love putting them together. And cool. in 2019, I, well, I started this podcast in, in like July of 2018. And uh, one of my first guests was Kelly Scott and from Failure and uh, Jordan Zadarosny from Blinker the Star. They came on and, right. and they've, been, they've, known, they've been friends for like 25 years. So they came on together. And uh, a few months after that, Failure released an album. I think it was, they'd been on hiatus for like 15 years, released an album in 20, I think it was 14. And they were about to release their second album for, after the Reformation. So they went on tour and uh, I got in touch with Kelly again. I, cause, I mean, we'll email back and forth or message back and forth occasionally. And uh, I'm like, hey, you know, if if uh, if there's any way I can bring my camera, I would love to see you guys. He's like, I will. I, I got a, a press pass for you. Just come on out because the show is in in Washington D.C. and I live about a little over an hour from D.C., so it's not that bad of a trip to get there. 
So okay. I went down to the show, brought my camera, and um, you know, after the show, he's like, he he comes out and he's like, hey, come on, come on back and uh, let's hang out. And so I went back and uh, it was kind of weird because they had this VIP section where if you if you bought a VIP pass, you could go up and meet the band afterwards. So there's me and like one guy and his son. And that, that's pretty much it at the time because I think it was a weekday show or something. So, so uh, we're just kind of sitting there chatting and he says goodbye to the guy and his son. And he's like, hey, Mark, uh, just come on with me. And the other guy looks at me like, what, what, how, why are you going to go with this guy? And I'm like, eh, well, you know, got, got a podcast, you know, what can I say? So we end up going back down to the stage because they've got to pack up their own gear. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, I love the band Failure. They're fairly well known, but it's the 930 Club in D.C. And it's, you know, they don't have all kinds of roadies. They're not the Stones. But no, no. But so they're packing up their own gear. And it was just so weird because Kelly and I are just talking about just random stuff, normal everyday stuff. And. I don't know the other two guys in the band really. I, it, Ken Andrews and uh, Greg Edwards, and they're j- so I'm thinking of these guys as these incredible musicians that I've known from the '90s that I've been listening to for twenty something years, and they're just sitting there, me sitting there packing up their own gear, chatting to me, making fun of Kelly, and just, I'm just like, God, they're just normal people. <laughs> they're just regular dudes was- on the stage. Yeah, it's kind of a weird feeling. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting when you you break down those barriers and you just realise obviously people are just people, aren't they? It's, yeah, uh, it's, it's and lo- luckily the people I've met over the years as well are all pretty. I don't know, all, all seem to be pretty pretty cool, decent people as well. You know, yeah. I'm sure there's some idiots out there, but I've been quite fortunate enough to do that really. <laughs> well, yeah. back back to humanist. You sent out a bunch of uh, requests for people to to do the vocals for the album. Did anyone say no? Uh, there was one person. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. If you're not comfortable but, um, telling, you don't have to say who. But I was just curious to see. No, yeah, yeah. There was there was there was one guy that I approached very early on. But not even um, massively well known either. But um, he just. I don't think he said no. He just kind of didn't didn't get back to me you know he just kind of like was interested asked me to, asked to hear a few things and then just kind of I, I think I followed it up and I didn't hear anything back but yeah. I was trying to um, get Susie Sue on the record Ooh, wow. uh, from the Banshees yeah and I, I had a lot of back and forth with her to kind of go to I don't know he's I don't know if he's his, her manager or not which I think she looks after herself but he's like the kind of go between and yeah it was kind of like, felt like it might happen. But anyway, I, I just couldn't seem to get that to connect. But maybe at some point. It happened. Hey, look, um, man, how long did it take us to, to get this? A, a year. Yeah, man. Sorry about to... that. <laughs> no, man, look, I, I, we both got I tr- lives. You know? Yeah, no, I, I do try to, to be honest with you, I do try to avoid interviews. I just don't really, like I said, it, it's not something that I um, feel massively confident doing so i just kind of tend to um, like i said like i was saying before i kind of with music i feel like i can express myself very clearly and exactly to say what I, exactly what i want to say musically but with words i just kind of don't know i don't feel like i can really you know well, you it's, do, um, if i could stop interrupting you you do a great job so oh thanks man <laughs> i just keep interrupting well, you're easy to talk to oh, <laughs> no. thanks man i appreciate that so, all right mm. so Let's get back to what you're comfortable with, the music. Yeah. You recorded the whole thing on your own then, except for the vocals, and th- those those were sent to you, but the, the album was kind of recorded on your own. Was that, in a, I mean, in a studio, or was it at your house? Or- well, yeah, no, I, so I did, I mean, pretty much all the record was recorded uh, just in, in my little studio that I've got, which is like the most basic equipment ever. But right at the beginning, once I had like about six or seven tracks together, uh, I went down to a studio with a guy called Fraser Smith. He was a producer, and we started tracking drums for a couple of the... I, I, off the top of my head, I think about five tracks, I can't remember. And so I took those drums and put them... Throughout the, the album, I, but I don't even know if there's one track where the drums are... The live drums are totally on their own. I don't think... I basically used the live drums and the uh, the program drums and put them together, which is pretty much uh, what uh, Alan Johannes did with Gargoyle. 
the drums that I sent. I, he got Jack out because I remember um, Lanigan had sent me a message. I said, oh, you know, probably because, uh, you know, oh, you, you should replace the drums, you know, trying to play it down really, you know, what I'd done. But I was quite, yeah. qu- quite proud of the drums that I'd programmed, but I thought maybe they could be a bit better, you know, because pro- in my head I know that the programs are not real. Yeah. And then when... So he did get Jack Irons to um, to do the drums, but then he sent me an email and said, to be honest with you, we've just ended up using the program Beats and we've kind of put Jack Irons, <laughs> he's in there, but he's just done it like, you know, the, the, the balance the two things together. And, yeah. and I think that probably, I thought, well, do you know what? Fuck it then. If it's good enough for Lanigan, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's good enough for me. So that gave me a bit of confidence. I just kind of thought, well, you know what? Especially with things like Kingdom, like that kick is so kind of obviously d- digital. You know what I mean? I just thought it yeah. sounds quite cool. But when then I like the balance of when the live drums really do kick in, you kind of it has such an impact. And I thought the two things together kind of work. So yeah. I'm riding through the kingdom. Ghost is riding by my side. As we roll up to the kingdom, ours is just to ride or die. There is no medicine to kill us. There is no medicine to take. Beware the shark below the surface. And Jack actually yeah. appears on one of the tracks on Humanist, right? Yeah, well, that that was a track that got rejected. Not rejected, it's not quite the right <laughs> word. <laughs> uh, it, originally, Skull was the opening track, I believe, for Gargoyle. Oh. And then right at the last minute, he used Death's Heads instead. Oh, uh, wow, okay. So, so, so you, yeah. the stuff that came out on Gargoyle, was that stuff that you had already written for Humanist, or did you write it specifically for Gargoyle? No, I wrote it for Gargoyle. Yeah, okay. so yeah, in a very short period of time as well. Uh, I mean, random. I, I had, up until this point, um, there was back and forth. At this point, Mark had only sung on Gospel and Kingdom, and okay. I'd had one email exchange with him, <laughs> and, that, and that was it. And in the in my email, I said, "Look, uh, thank you so much for doing this. And if you ever." fancy doing something together later down the line I'd be totally up for it for your record or whatever you know yeah and never heard anything back and then about three weeks after that maybe a month or something I've just got an email out the blue and it was like hey man it's Mark uh I'm going into the studio in about uh eight days or ten days or something and I'm um I'm not really sure I'm digging some of the tracks do you have any leftover humanist material so I was like, fuck. Oh. Uh, so I was like, uh, no, but if you give me a week, I'll I'll get into something and try and send you something new. And, you, uh, you know, what form does it need to be in? And it was just like anything, man, just like anything you've got that you, you dig in, send, send it through. So I was like, right, fuck it. Here's an opportunity. Yes. So I locked myself uh, literally for every single day. I mean, I was, I mean, I had a, at this point as well, I had a really fucking shit job. I was working in like the kitchen. Oh man. And uh, oh man, it was horrible. It was like, for, I mean, the people that were there were lovely, you know, but it was just like one of these like grueling, I was like, I needed money and I was like doing this shit, but, um, this See, shitty work. And then we, we go back to the, it, it just, it, it, to me, there's just such a, I hate the word disconnect, but there's just such a, uh, a separation between, you you're working with Mark Lanigan, but you also have to have a day job. It's just yeah, it's fucking. I mean, I've been I've been lucky over the last four to five years. I will say that I've been like kind of I've, I've done little bits of work here and there when I've had to, but then I've had periods where I haven't had to work because I've made just enough money to pay you know with music to <laughs> yeah. to pay for things. But you know, it's a constant battle. But at that yeah. point, I'd, you know, Exit Calm was totally done. I just started writing again and I had the humanist thing that I was working on, but I, you know, nothing else. So I was yeah. kind of doing this thing. So I w- and I was working about 50 hours a week at this fucking job that I had and exhausted at the end of it. But in that period of, I just thought, well, I, I'd come home at midnight and I'd just stay up writing, recording, writing, recording, 
just throwing ideas down at speed and I get up, go to work and come back and do the same again. I just thought, oh, fuck it, man. I don't care how tired I'm going to get. I'm going to throw everything I've got into this. Yeah. I mean, and what an I re- Yeah. And I got, I mean, I recorded 10 things. I, I threw two things away. I had eight tracks and six ended up on the album and one came back. One ended up scrapping and the other one was Skull, which came back to me and ended up going on, obviously, the human records. That's um. So, Amazing. That is incredible. Yeah, I was surprised that he took it, man. I was thinking, every, 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 I sent him two lots of four tracks, and he t- every time he was like, God damn it. <laughs> 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 That's, so, yeah, yeah, I can picture him. Yeah. I can picture him saying that. Yeah, he's, he's, super, he's a super uh, beautiful man. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm very lucky to have Mark in my life. He's uh, always in- included me in. In, when the Gargoyle Press was out there, he was like always like he, he just name checking me, and also he, you know if it wasn't for Lanigan, Dave Garn wouldn't be on the record. He's the guy that hooked me up with Dave. That's and incredible. Just, yeah, that's a great just, song just, too. Shot caller, man. That's that's such a great track. Thanks. Thank you again. <laughs> well, I, can't, I, 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 I don't know. I feel a little fanboyish. Too many compliments, dude. Mark. I know, I know. I feel a little fanboyish, but the, the album, really, from start to finish, it's just one of the most solid albums out there. It's just, it's just really, really well written, well produced. That you've got such a variety, and that I think maybe that's one reason why I like it so much is that it's not all Mark Lanigan. It's not all Mark Gardner. It's not all Dave Gahan or Ron Sexton. It's, it's, it's so many different people and so many different styles. Uh, you know, like Truly Too Late. You know that. Yeah, yeah. That's a great track. That 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 sounds nothing like any anything else on the album. Yeah, I, I was. I mean, with, with that in mind, I was slightly concerned I, I, as I kind of was building this picture of the full record. I was thinking, oh, is it not going to? Is it going to feel disconnected? Or will it have the continuity? But I feel like it does flow from the beginning to the end, and it doesn't feel even. I would probably say the Ron Sexsmith track is probably the kind of wild card on the record because it kind of that is a real shift in dynamic. But I think that's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because you know you don't want it to be you know ten, twelve, fourteen tracks of just getting pummeled to death. Like oh, like holy crap, Um, English Ghosts. Speaking of John Robb from oh, gotcha, yeah. that yeah. song is relentless. Yeah. It is, <laughs> it is crazy. It is. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that, as it was rec- we, it, originally, it went, as you hear it, is how it went down, but it was longer. And oh. I kind of, <laughs> it, it was one take. Really? And, uh, yeah, one, one take, one take of guitar, one take of bass. I programmed the bit like the drums in probably five minutes. And then we put a tambourine on it. John did his vocal at the same time as I was doing guitar, I think. Wow. Uh, Those vocals are otherworldly at times. Yeah, man. They're fucking... I mean, had I not been totally locked in and totally focused on what, on the right, the track as it was being written, you know, some of the unorthodox noises that John was like coming out of his mouth. But I might <laughs> have cra- cracked it. into a giggle, you know. But, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but he's, a, he's an enigma. Like, he's, a, I mean, he's a real deal. And it turns out, I mean, that's kind of almost like the centerpiece of the record, English Ghost. I knew once we had that, I thought, right, fucking hell. Like, 
like I feel like I've covered all yeah. bases now. Because you know? <laughs> it was, I think that was the last track that went on the record, believe it or not. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So John originally came down to put some bass, just to put some bass on the track, but it didn't end up going on the record. And as we were starting that, I was like, should we just fuck this up? What was that? I, I remember he played the the bass line that is the thing that runs all the way through the track. And I was like, right, that thing you're playing there now, let's fucking use that. So we, we, we quickly stuck that down, programmed a beat, and then, it, and then we just started from, you know, just played it all the way through, start to wow. finish, like the whole improv. That's... Uh, yeah, it was fucking... Oh, God. The moment. That is crazy. Oh, see, I, that's why I love talking to musicians because that's... A, oh, to hear that that track was just basically one take, that's incredible. Pretty much the, the, the and so for example, we go back to everything that I pretty much do is one take, and that, and the, the reason for that being is that I when I try to write music, I, when I, when I get that when I go into, like oh, fucking hell, I try to say this without sounding pretentious or anything because I hate I hate when I read people or hear people talking like this, but I try to think when I'm doing music. I, try to think of nothing whatsoever. I just try to fall into that place where whatever it is, where you start to, where you just start doing things. Do you know what I mean? And when I get there, I don't want to be thinking about the fucking computer or right, right. what I'm playing. I just throw it, things down. Like as, like as, as, it, as, it, as it comes to me, it just goes down and I don't care what it sounds like. Right. Nothing's considered. It's just, it just happens. And then I kind of go back afterwards and try to like fix that like, oh, well, that's a bit noisy. I'll try and get get rid of that. But with gospel, for example, that was the whole thing is an improvisation from start to finish. And it's wow. there's nothing, there's no edits in that guitar part from start to finish, Whoa. which was a fucking nightmare because <laughs> it wasn't to a it wasn't to a click. So trying to put drums to it was just like, oh my gosh, like try, you know, getting things in time. But I didn't think yeah, about that. It, the spirit you know capturing something as it happens is just amazing isn't it and i think it, that's what resonates with me and then hopefully with other people you know that's you, you can't you can't re, you can't recreate that moment you can try yeah. to but it's never it's never the same so what's the fucking point just you know well my mother father too I've gone home to be with God to lay their troubles down. You know my sister, brother too. They have gone home to be with God. They have gone home to lay their burdens down. Were you ever able to play live uh, the album? You know, play get a get a band together and, and play anything out. We started rehearsing. And we were just about to go on to, we had seven UK dates booked in and, but there was, um, our, this was kind of just pre lockdown, the yeah. first lockdown. We, there was obviously dates in Europe after that and then more dates in, in the UK. Well, like Europe and the dates in the UK when the seven dates that we had originally booked in, they got rearranged. Well, they've been rearranged four times now. So it's God. just been a fucking nightmare to be honest. But oh. Everybody's gone through the same, yeah, same shit. So, so you had a, a band set i mean who so who is going to take this out on the road with you uh so the drummer is scott who's just been with me forever the really rock. he was a drummer yeah <laughs> he was uh yeah, exactly man yeah <laughs> he is the rock yeah he's he was in lights of sleep and exit calm so he's playing drums and then tasha starkey who's playing bass she was in a band called bella kiss her, okay. Obviously, her dad's. I don't know. He he's a drummer in the Who. It's something like that. Um, yeah. Zach Starkey uh, is, her, is her dad. So you, so, wow. Yeah. So, but she's a fucking great bass player. We and Exit Khan played with uh, her bands 
oh, quite a few times and I would, every time that we saw them I was like fuck man like because I don't really and it's not often that I see people playing and go oh, wow they're fucking really good yeah. I don't you know I just don't really but I remember seeing her playing bass and I was like fuck man she's really good wow so when this kind of came up sent her a message and she was up for it so that, that's been wicked getting her in and then a guy called James Madritsky is the guy that is taking on the vocals okay um he was in a band called pure essence a, a band in manchester i don't know if you've heard of them no uh, you should check them out if you haven't i will um uh so he he's he's got an amazing voice brilliant front man and he's got i mean he's it's a big task to take on doing up a pit. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that wherever we play, I can try and drag somebody from the record. Like, I know John Robb is going to do a couple of, uh, get up and do some tracks here and there. But I wanted to, I didn't want to have to rely on anybody. I just wanted to be able to go out and do it yeah. as a band. And I wanted it to be different because what's the point in trying to recreate the record? You know, it's, it's, yeah. I quite like the idea of, of taking the tracks and trying to do something with them because that that is the kind of point of humanist really well, it's not meant to be that's that's what i've always loved about live shows is i if, if i wanted to hear it the exact way it was done on the record i just put on the record exactly you know? yeah i want to i want to hear uh you know i want to hear something a little a little bit different by playing it live because even if it's just just sounds a little more stripped down and bare that that's okay with me but if you know there's no point to me Aside from a couple uh, bands, there's almost no point to to hearing a, something that sounds exactly like the record. I like hearing. No, I, I agree. A little improv, a, a, a little little more bare bone version. I don't know. Yeah, it's got. It, it, well, you know, for a start, there's different people been playing in the live band than there's on the record, so it's going to be fucking different anyway. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you can't play point? everything on, on the stage. No. <laughs> so, but um. But yeah, no, it's, it was sounding fuck, It was sounding really good in rehearsal room, and like loads of energy, and cool. just powerful. And we were all buzzing to get out and start playing. And then obviously lockdown kicked in, and and yeah. everything's just gone to shit, really. But so, what's the yeah. situation like in the UK right now at this point? Because over here they're talking about maybe summertime opening up some things, like um, you know, a smaller capacity for sports, um, and maybe you know, closer to the end of the year at live venues opening up again. Uh, is it, what's going on over there in the UK? Well, I mean, as it stands, right, we're still in lockdown. I don't think, I mean, there's a roadmap that they've put out of uh, things kind of, but I don't, I mean, the government don't know what the fuck is. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it's know. a terrible state. Right? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, they, you know, obviously the, the people have started to uh, advertise and put tours towards the back end of the year. And the, the, is it, our tour is, is in October now and there's talk of it happening, but I don't know, man. I just, I'm not, I can't see how we're, we're in lockdown now, how it come kind of October that they're going to be able to put oh. 300 people in a sold out venue. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not shoulder to shoulder. How is that going to, you know, I don't know. And, well, and, the, but, and in addition to that, you've, you've got to remember just the logistics of everything. You know, you can't just say, okay, everything's open. And then tomorrow, you know, bands are going to be playing in clubs, you know, places. Yeah, no, we're, we're not been. We haven't rehearsed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, and, and we, as it stands empty. at the moment, no, nobody can get together to rehearse. We're not. You know, you're literally legally not allowed right. to go from one city to another, unless or town wow. to another, unless you are, uh, unless it's for work. You know what I mean? Wow. So that's great. Uh, uh, this this entire time, I've been having to drive forty five miles back and forth to my job. This whole so I I haven't really been in lockdown. <laughs> I wow. I was considered essential. So and then. Then I asked for a raise, and they're like, "You're not that essential." <laughs> <laughs> but <Fuckers. laughs> but they've they've actually taken care of me. Starting the uh, they, they've they've done a really good job at, since the turn of the year. So that, I, I got to hand it to them. They've they've actually done a really good job with with uh, understanding the struggles that me and everybody in my department in my building have have had to go through over the past year. So it finally clicked with them, and they. They, they've actually kind of turned a corner, so I'm very happy. So oh, that's cool. Well, what's happening where you are then? Are you in lockdown right now, or no. things are back to normal? Uh, or, things, you know, uh, back to normal, but no, things are open. See, and it, it over here, it just it just kind of depends state to state. Um, we, you know, I can go wherever, back and forth, wherever we want, as long as as long as the um, 
office, you know, offices, restaurants, stores, as long as they're open, you know, you can go in, but you gotta, you gotta wear a mask. Um, right. They try to stress social distancing, which is a, a term I've come to hate at this point. I try to, to, to be as respectful to everybody as we can. And, and everybody around in, you know, where I live is doing a pretty good job of it. The, they're actually, my kids go to high school. All three of my kids are in high school right now. I've got a, a 16, 17 and 18 year old and they're going to school on campus two days a week and virtual two days a week. And then f- like Friday is the day where they, they need to just turn all their work in. So Friday's kind of like a weird day. They're actually thinking about in April having the kids go to school four days a week, you know, on campus. Right. So, uh, you know, to me, it looks like things are starting to open up and, uh, but you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Where well, we- fingers crossed. It's, it's been a fucking, this particular lockdown, it's been a total drag, man. It's just yeah. like, fucking hell. Well, I can so imagine. So frustrating. Every- I can, I, yeah. you guys were in, uh, UK was in lockdown for quite a while. I mean, I, I had Jack Bates on a while ago and he, you know, this was, uh, gosh, I, I'd say summer and he was practically stir crazy when I had him on. And, uh, then you guys had to go through a whole nother lockdown. So I can imagine the mental fatigue you guys, you know, what it's doing. Uh, it's, yeah, man. It's, it's, bizarre. he's a, he's a, he seems like a nice guy, by the way. Doesn't he, Jack? Oh, Jack is great. I owe him a t-shirt. Jack, I promise I'm going to, I'll get it to you. <laughs> so, so. He's, I think he, he's on about coming down to the Manchester gig. I've never met him before. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of back and forth again, just through, uh, the social media, yeah. yeah. So he's got, I, I'll, yeah. Landing and bringing people together. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speak. Okay, so speaking of Landing, you're also on the Somebody's Knocking album. Was that? Uh, yeah. Was any of that left over from Humanist stuff, or was that all brand new stuff that you'd recorded for him? Uh, all brand new stuff again. Oh. Yeah. Um, so uh, after Gargoyle, yeah. I mean, I just, I, I guess become friends obviously but yeah. I'm, yeah. and um he was like oh man you know just let's uh just keep writing together so we just have you know we've just written quite a lot of stuff really and um i've always kind of like throwing any ideas that i have that i think are suitable towards him and if they if he feels like they're right then he used them for his records so i know he's working on a, a new record and i've yeah. sent a couple of things as well that i think he probably end up using so oh awesome but um he's just moved though uh to um ireland i don't know whereabouts in ireland did you know that or? yeah yeah it's it, oh gosh this is kind of funny because he came on a second time to uh, around christmas i reached back out to him and i, I said hey look, i want to do a special christmas episode and you just because he just released that Dark Mark Does Christmas album officially. Because oh uh, yeah, I haven't heard that. Oh, it's really good. It? Yeah. Oh, it's really yeah, it's it's awesome. Because he was doing it on tours, he would sell it out of his merch table, but it was it was just something he did himself, and he would sell uh, around Christmas time, and he would always sell out of it. And so he finally decided to release it officially and put it out on on CD. And he had written a or no, uh, Peter Hook had written a forward for uh, the second printing of his book uh, of Lanigan's book uh, right yeah sing backwards and weep so I said well let's if, if you don't mind I'd love to do a really short Christmas special for the podcast and it was funny because he actually thought my podcast was somebody else's podcast which <laughs> I I totally get because you know I don't have a whole lot of correspondence with him we're not like best friends but uh, it's kind of funny I'm, I'm kind of hoping maybe he didn't agree just because of that, but um, he was cool with oh, it. Gun, gun. And at the time, oh, he's a good guy, man. Well, at the time, he's like, he's like, uh, use this phone number. So we, he's like, I'm, I'm uh, in Ireland. So I'm like, oh, okay. So, so we started talking about that, and he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, I'm not looking at places. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna be moving here permanently. I'm like, oh, and it, it's. He said it just makes sense. He's like, everybody I work with is in Europe, so. I said that that yeah. makes perfect sense. So, since he is there, is there you guys think you might work a little more together? I mean, you guys work together a lot as it is, but it would I know it'd be easier. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, we're still work, working together now. I, I can't. I, I mean, I'd like to think that the that would probably continue on. I think it probably will. You might be able to get um, him to show but, up at one of the live gigs then. Yeah, man, you never know. Fingers it's, crossed. I, 
Yeah, he's going to be itching to get out on tours because I mean, that was his main thing, wasn't it? I mean, he, used to, he never stops really, no. and so it's got to be tough for him. And also going from Los Angeles to Ireland, that's it. That's a fucking huge change, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I so, thought it was bad when I moved from New Jersey to Alabama. That was rough, but right. LA to Ireland. <laughs> Man. Yeah, what a contrast. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So I know that the, the, we were just talking about how the pandemic and the, the lockdown has been really hard on you and everybody, especially in Europe and, and, and all. Have, have you been writing more music? I know you wrote a ton of stuff for Humanist, right? Has, have you continued to keep writing ever since? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I've, I've not been doing it at the same pace. I'll, I'll be to- totally honest. It kind of did knock the wind out of my sails a little <laughs> bit when the kind of first lockdown kicked in. Because oh, yeah. I've done so much writing up until that point that I was really itching to, I really wanted to get out and play live because I hadn't played live for since Exit Calm. So probably it had been four four or five years at that point. So I was really kind of, and I'd had, an, once Exit Calm had finished, I'd kind of, I was ready for a break from playing live. I felt like I'd done it so much that kind of like the thrill and the excitement of like walking out was becoming a little bit kind of, I don't know, man. It just, I did, the, the buzz wasn't there anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is shit, you know, when it gets to that point. I mean, I still love playing live. I mean, don't, it's just like all all the other stuff that goes with it. Yeah, the traveling around and stuff. I got a bit tired of that. Um, well, and like like we had mentioned before, so, you, you got to bring your stuff in and out. You know, you're not the Stones, unfortunately. So there's yeah, exactly. the performing is just part of it. It's traveling and packing and unpacking all your equipment and oh, absolutely, yeah. And it's I mean we've it's always been like. A, a, a slog, really. You know what I mean? We've, there's never been any glamour in it for us. But we, you know, I, I did love. I, I did love that side of, of, and especially towards the end of Exocam, we start to actually sell out gigs up and down the country, which is like a, probably for the last couple of years we started doing that, and that was that was pretty incredible, really. I never walked out thinking, "Oh, this is normal." I, for me, it was just like, "Wow, fucking, this is incredible." We just turned up to a venue, you know, a venue to have people actually there and want to fucking that want to see us. It's, it's always a thrill, but it, every, with it combined with everything else that was going off at that point, I just kind of reached a point where I was for the first time ever. Really, where I thought, right, I'm kind of ready to not play live for a bit now. Um, Makes but sense. yeah, for, but normally with with all this, uh, I'm, I'm quite prolific, really, and I'm with writing and I'm self motivated. And but yeah, just kind of I don't know. It was a bit of a struggle getting back into the writing, but I pushed and kept going. And yeah, I've, I've got you know I've been doing lots of writing, actually lots of writing with different people and working on a new humanist records. But probably, I mean, I've got more than enough material <laughs> for. Yeah, you know, a number of humanist records. Really, so. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, <laughs> I think I, I remember reading where you had uh, you said you'd written enough for like eight sides of a or four sides of a humanist album. So it, yeah. it would have been like a four disc. <laughs> it's, it's grown from that. At this point, you well, should you have know, eight I, double I, albums. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I probably do, yeah. But the thing is, you, the more tracks that you do get, the more kind of, somehow it feels like a burden to have them and not be doing anything with them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how, wow. why that is, that. but it, yeah, I, I, it's almost like it feels like, oh God, if I, I, I need to stop because I've got all this stuff and I feel like I need to do something with it. Otherwise, it's just sat there and... It doesn't feel fresh. The stuff that feels fresh is the stuff that I'm writing and that's what I'm excited about. And when I tend to finish a track, I leave it alone and I don't really go back to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm constantly moving on and I've, at this, I'm reaching a point where I feel like I need to stop <laughs> and just kind of collect things together and, and, put, yeah, and put them into one place. Really. Oh, man. Well, you, you can always just release them as singles on Bandcamp. Yeah, <laughs> yes, could do that. <laughs> I know people like me. Would, well, nothing's would... it once you get a once you get a label involved, everything just becomes a little bit. Because I tried to do some kind of giveaway track, and it was like, no, you can't give away the track. It's got to be done this way. And I was oh, like, oh, okay, it's too too complicated, you know. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think I've, I've, at some point I probably put. Um, some kind of I don't know thing together and probably just stick them on band camp or give it away or something I don't know oh man well I'm down for that because I absolutely love the stuff that you've done so it's funny because alright so you, that's a good possibility because 
So I just had another guy who I forgot to mention that suggested I have you on the episode was Peter Holmstrom from Dandy Warhols. And oh wow! Well. And yeah. um, the Dandies are doing stuff on Bandcamp. They've got this. Um, I'm trying to think of what it was. They call it. Um, oh shit! I don't remember what the hell they call it. It's it, it's an album. They they put out a track every week, and it's no longer than a minute. And then once they get like. 25 of these songs together they they put it together as a little compilation and and you can you know listen to them you, they'll try to remember how they release it it's through uh, the, the email or, or their website or something and you can listen to them at or, or social media as they release them but then once they get enough they'll actually put them all together and put it out on Bandcamp and it's like a name your own price well, the, do you mean in, like instrumental tracks or do you mean no. an actual song? It's an actual song. But a song that's a minute long. Yeah, it's like wow. 30 seconds to a minute long. And they're crazy. Some wow. of them are hilarious. But it's usually the entire band. And there's like five people in that band. So they're, you know, every week they're getting together, even if it's just virtually, and putting something together 30 seconds to a minute long. It's just crazy. Wow. Yeah. Fuck. That would be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, it has been. And I'll look, I'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I'd struggle a minute, man. Fucking hell. I, I've come from uh, <laughs> six, seven minute tracks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, that, that I've, in my head is somehow a single. Do you know what I mean? But I, yeah. you know, I've, I've scaled it down quite a bit recently, but a minute now, I, couldn't do it. I don't think that's possible for me. Yeah, but you've probably, you've that's got like, you've got so much stuff lying around. You could just start putting that out one at a time. One, one, one track a week. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> well, it, I w- I've got kind of like a slightly dip, like ambient kind of more of a soundtracky kind of a uh, oh, bunch of ideas that I was thinking of releasing, in, you know, maybe like that or, or the band camp thing or just something that's separate. But yeah, I'll see. I, awesome. I need to get more focused with that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, I do what I can to help people out. Yeah. Oh man, it's been like therapy. What can I say? <laughs> well, it, dude, I'm really I've, I've I've kept you quite a while here, man. I and you said you're working on hopefully a new humanist album. Is there anything else going on that that uh, you're involved in that that might be coming out soon? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, so I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm with it. Sorry, my voice is from by <laughs> I, I was going to say, are you, you uh, you on a motorbike now? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that'd be a new um, no, one. No, I mean I am. We well, right? What playing on a motorbike? Play, or, doing a podcast off a motorbike, playing on a motorbike, anything that would be. Oh my yeah, god! You, you're the king of that, Mark. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your next podcast. Maybe be, uh, something on a bike. Yeah. Well. I don't know. I, yeah. So I am working on a a, a project. A possible project with somebody, but I probably wouldn't name who it, I could tell you, but I don't know if it should be part of the podcast or whatever. Yeah, I've, I've kept you for over two hours at this point. Where can people follow you on social medias? Uh, all any, any or all of them, or none of them if you're not on them? Uh, how can people keep oh, I'm track a, of what I'm you're on doing? all of them? I'm everywhere. <laughs> uh, no, I, yeah, I was just Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, the three things. I mean, I, I don't like social media i'll be honest but i kind of obviously you've got to have them yeah so i just kind of like keep i'm probably most active on instagram and facebook really twitter yeah. kind of I, I just did a, a tim's listening party i don't know if you've heard of that but it's uh tim burgess from the charlatans so yes. he does this yeah it's, it's quite a weird concept but strangely it was quite enjoyable um i think I, that's i was kind of oh gosh somebody i th- was it Lanigan po- uh, tweeted about that? Yeah, that's right. He did one for his record. Yeah, but again, he, he that, tweeted one for that yours. Came through uh, Lanigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He, yeah, he. So when they were when we were doing the Humanist record, um, he jumped in and added a few comments, and so did John Rob and Ron Sexsmith and everybody. I think apart from. Mark Gardner, I think, uh, jumped in and, and added a comment. I think Mark Gardner did later on. So, uh, oh, awesome. yeah, it was, yeah, that was really, yeah, it was, it was, I was kind of slightly nervous about doing that because the, the idea of people 
<laughs> at nine o'clock, play, pressing play at home, and then twi- I was thinking, well, fucking hell, is anybody going to actually turn up to this? Because he'd, he'd done some big ones with Paul McCartney, and am I just going to be tweeting to myself? Do you know what I mean? But luckily, yeah. <laughs> I, and because I'm not quite active on Twitter, it's not one of the kind of places that I've got tons of, like, a lot of followers. Yeah. So I was kind of slightly thinking, oh, fuck. But no, luckily, it went really well, man. It, was so, it couldn't have gone better. So. That's awesome. So, yeah. That- so, yeah, I guess the, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm out there if uh, anybody wants to connect. Well, man, I, <laughs> I, I, hopefully after hearing this, you'll get, a, you'll get at least like five or six more people. We'll see. I don't know how many people actually listen to this yeah. podcast. I, I have no clue. My I followers don't... will probably start to diminish after <laughs> this. Uh... <laughs> it, that, you know that it'll that'll just be the uh, the trend. I mean, you when when uh, you, with lights of sleep, you, you everybody quit when you joined. Then uh, we've kept having yeah, yeah. connectivity issues. So, but yeah. I didn't give up. <laughs> I didn't quit. Uh, yeah, well, I do. I've, you know, if, if, if there's one asset that I've got, it's perseverance. That's you know what I mean. But uh... <laughs> man, I I have kept you. For, I've been very selfish with your time. So thank you so much. No, no it's for, been a pleasure talking to you. 